Hello and welcome to Codex Entries number two. And in this episode, I'm going to be filling out the entries that I've already covered in the first Codex Entry video. The UAC, the coded entry, two of two. New advocates, welcome to the UAC. This guidebook will serve as your personal guide to fitting in at the Argent facility on Mars. Your devotion to the UAC's mission is the foundation on which we achieve the establishment of a new paradigm to move humanity forward into the future. Tier 1 advocates may take some time to adjust to life on Mars, but with faith and dedication you can look forward to a long and fruitful career as your work towards full induction. Your transition to Tier 2 status will be judged upon your actions here. Make a good impression, new advocate. This guide will update automatically as you access new areas of the facility. Expect more helpful hints into the UAC way of life. And as we say here on Mars, power from the people. Next we have Resource Operations, Decoded Entry, 2 of 2. And in that vision they saw the future bold and powerful and the many worked as one to bring the new order what better words to inspire you as you set about initiating yourself into the uac those who came before you and those you serve with all operate with the same goal in mind the development of a new dawn for mankind it is by this principle of teamwork that we will elevate ourselves to the next plane of existence if you have any new suggestions to improve the work environment while working your tenure in ResOps, please submit suggestion form WADE1M4 to your command controller. However, it is imperative that you learn to accept the things you can't change and follow the path that has been laid out for you. Your service in ResOps is a test of your devotion to the cause. Should you be asked to submit yourself to an interrogation program or experimental treatment, you're expected to comply without question. If a fellow advocate asks you to engage in a dedication ceremony, say yes. If you see an advocate doubting their role at the UAC, bring it to the attention of an enforcer so they might receive the help they need. Don't be selfish. Tier 2 is for everyone. And now, Foundry. Decoded Entry 1 of 2 The Foundry, an extension wing of resource operations, the first Mars outpost, processes all the heavy elements mined from the outlying Martian landscape and from around the original location of the Argent Fracture. Refining Argent Plasma requires a large amount of transitional metals and noble gases, so a central location that can be systemically cleansed and decontaminated is required to keep Argent energy production at maximum efficiency. As such, this area is considered a high-risk area and all UAC employees are subject to regular med checks to ensure their production capabilities are not degraded by the environment. Industrial accident-related deaths in the foundry dropped dramatically in MTC 2146 thanks to the implementation of new UAC safety protocols where employees exposed to dangerous materials are immediately sent to the Lazarus labs for cleansing, re-education, and where possible, reintegration. As a result of this protocol, officially reported deaths have dropped to negligible amounts. And now we have Argent Energy, decoded entry two of two. Argent energy is produced by neutron activation of Argent Plasma, a new and powerful substance that was discovered on Mars. This produces an exothermic reaction where recorded temperatures within the plasma have exceeded previously accepted theoretical limits. Through a process not yet fully understood, Argent Plasma remains stable and self-contained throughout. Conventional nuclear power is obsolete. What used to take a nuclear reactor 12 months to produce can be generated in a few seconds by the Argent Tower and packaged into an Argent accumulator no larger than Samuel Hayden's hand. Argent plasma was originally discovered by the SS Edmondson when it landed in the Promethei Terra 
region of Mars in 2095 as a part of the UAC Geological Survey Mission Frontier. While searching for liquid water springs, the survey bot discovered a narrow trench which has now become known as the Argent Fracture. The fracture emitted a substance that at first appeared to be an electrical gas cloud. However, deeper analysis of the substance showed it to be an entirely new form of matter with a quantum signature never before recorded. Initial tests on this new matter immediately showed its potential. When a 2 megakelvin cutting laser was fired at the substance, it absorbed the heat with ease and remained self-contained. A second expedition was planned to further analyze this remarkable new Argent Plasma. There has been speculation that the development of Argent energy goes beyond traditional science and bleeds into the realm of SEFT, Spiritual Energy Field Theory. Experiments in this fringe science have been heavily criticized in the past as their development often involves occult-like practices and the channeling of resources from poorly understood extra-dimensional resources. Coupled with the reports of cultish practices within the UAC, there are deep concerns over how Argent energy is being produced and if it is indeed safe. The UAC has refused to reveal the details despite repeated requests by the Global Science Council. Despite concern over the safety of producing energy with a process that is not fully understood, the need for a reliable energy source since the depletion of plutonium and uranium reserves is a powerful argument. When the UAC unveiled an Argent Energy powered hand sized 24 volt battery with over 12,000 megawatt hours, the future energy supply within the solar system was set. One battery array could power an entire city block for several months. Researchers at the Global Science Council have speculated that the UAC's most advanced battery technology, the Argent Accumulator, can hold over 30,000 megawatt hours but that the UAC is deliberately bottlenecking the production to maintain maintained control over the market value. The UAC has no comment on the matter. Okay, so next, let's take a look at Samuel Hayden. And I got decoded entry two of three. Before Samuel Hayden died, he completed detailed instructions and designs for a new body, a bionic automaton with plasmatronic processing core a biomechanical brain. Samuel instructed that his frontal and temporal lobes were to remain intact, but the function of his parietal and occipital lobes were to be bypassed and networked to the plasmatronic core. Samuel's personality, memories, reasoning, and comprehension would be carried over to his new framework, but his perception and calculation would become supercharged. Powered by Argent caches and later by an Argent accumulator, the cybernetic transference was a success. Samuel returned, bigger, stronger, and more formidable than before, in a three meter tall mechanoid body. When his decision to choose such a mammoth mechanical physique was questioned, Samuel responded, dictating the future of mankind is dangerous work. You never know when we may need a hero. Stem cells and neuronal conditioning agents keep his organic matter, specifically his brain, constantly rejuvenating. He has existed for over 130 years now and is presumed his lifespan will be indefinite. It is said that his body has long since passed, but his soul will live on forever. Next we have Vega, decoded entry. Two of three. Vega is an acronym, though the exact meaning has not been revealed by Hayden or the UAC. Once named, it was decided that the AI would need to be given a personality to make interactions more agreeable. A gender was assigned, male, a virtual age was established, 50 years old, and a colloquial speech pattern implemented. As such, speaking to Vega is a calming and pleasant affair. A blind study was conducted with computer science students to see if Vega would pass the Turing test. 
The students were instructed to ask a series of questions to both Vega via Satlink and a mathematics professor from MIT to see if they could tell which one was the computer. 92% of the students thought they were both humans. Only 8% detected that Vega was a computer. Vega also played the professor. Next, we have... Looks like the heavy assault rifle. Two of three. The heavy assault rifle can be fitted with a parallax compensating telescopic sight that allows for multiple zoom levels and a gimbal mounted recoil stabilizers. The high accuracy of the UAC TS3 turns the HAR into an excellent sniper rifle that is capable of firing multiple rounds without creating unmanageable recoil. And now we have, looks like the Hell Knight. Decoded entry, two of two. Tablets retrieved from the Great Step in the UAC Automated Survey of 2143 suggest that the Hell Knight originally flanked the Great Serpent during the first age. After their master was defeated by the Guardian, the Hell Knights were placed in the arenas of Hell where they would feed on any victims thrown to them by the demon overlords as sport. It is now believed that they guard the most sacred and important relics in the netherworld. Now we have Imp, decoded entry two of two. Despite their low status among the demon ranks and their seemingly endless numbers, imps have unique characteristics in battle. Some prefer fighting from an elevated position, while others will rush their target and swipe at them with razor-sharp claws. Walls and obstacles offer no defense against imps, as they will leap great heights and easily hang from surfaces. The imp is capable of channeling hell energy through its hands and shaping it into a projectile. As the imp channels the energy, airborne particles and debris are sucked into the maelstrom to create a condensed, superheated fireball. The mechanics of the imp's ranged attacks suggest that they are actually a lower form of the summoner. And next we have the Hellraiser, decoded entry two of two. Recent dissection of a captured Hellraiser has revealed a remarkable embryogenesis. Between the third and eighth week of development, a parasitic Hellraiser will seek out a suitable host to cremate from within. As the Hellraiser mute matures, the host's arm ossifies into a beam weapon. Simultaneously, the pyrolyzed host becomes capable of withstanding the extreme temperatures generated during the repeated accumulation of Hell energy. The Hellraiser has not yet been observed outside of Hell, and further investigation is planned for the next tethering operation. Next we have Possessed Security, two of two. A Possessed Security will keep an optimal distance from its target. If the target gets too close, the Possessed Security will attack with a ferocious shield bash and then retreat to a preferred engagement range. The Possessed Security have only been observed using the DS-117 uh, UAC shotgun and shield outfit which, which suggests that their ranks are exclusively created from members of a special forces military unit called the UAC Neo Phalanx. The Neo Phalanx is used exclusively as military defense for remote UAC colonies. And looks like last we have the Doom Marine. Decoded entry two of two. Mm. Without doubt, the UAC's most remarkable recent discovery was uncovered in its expedition to Hell's Kattingar Sanctum. After several kilometers through nearly impassable terrain, the team discovered a sealed tomb, its entrance and walls covered in protective runes and imprisonment incantations. Once opened, the tomb revealed many artifacts, including the prayer suit. Most notable, however, was an enormous sarcophagus bound to the center bedrock of the tomb with thick iron bands. 
seemingly anchored to prevent anything from getting in or out. It was initially believed this sarcophagus must hold a rare or powerful demon, but when later opened, it revealed the body of a man. The body was not petrified or decomposed. In fact, he appeared to be only sleeping despite the fact that the bed he lay in seemed millennia old. Attempts to wake the man were fruitless, and to harm him even more so as a protective argent barrier around the body kept him safe from harm and permanent stasis. UAC archivists cataloged the discovery DM-1-5, but project personnel had soon dubbed him the Doom Marine. While the history of this man remains conjecture, the Helix Stone, as well as other artifacts found at the Argent Fracture and during the Hell Expedition of ECM-13, have shed some light on his identity. An etching in the Book of Deva, another discovery at the Kedengar Expedition, depicts the Doom Marine wearing the Praetor suit, engaging demons in battle as a hooded figure looks on. This image had been previously observed numerous times in other artifacts, but only with the actual discovery of the Doom Marine and Praetor suit in the sealed Kattengar tomb have researchers begun to put other pieces together. It is now believed the Doom Marine might have been a part of an ancient group or tribe, maybe even their leader. Whether he is god, demon, or human will remain undetermined until the Argent Barrier protecting his body can be deactivated. Further deepening the mystery of his origin, UAC remote monitoring drones in service during the Kattengar expedition recorded a protracted and deadly battle during the sarcophagus extraction. The demons attempting to defend the tomb with an instinctual ferocity previously unobserved. Once tethered and returned to the UAC, the sarcophagus was studied and first opened at the Lazarus Labs, but went missing a few weeks later. It was believed that Samuel Hayden had the body and Praetor suit moved and hidden to keep it secure, although why he considered it to be under threat is not known. A final note. To date, the Doom Marine and Samuel Hayden are the only known non-demon entities to successfully cross over from the Hell Dimension to our own, despite several attempts by other UAC human personnel to do the same. And that is it for this video. As you can see, there are a lot of um, other codex entries and uh, I'm going to curate the content and come up with a video that has um, relevant information to the next set of uh, episodes that come out. So I'm able to not just have one long codex video, you're able to have digestible chunks uh, for, uh, like I said, that would be relevant to the next gameplay uh, footage that I upload. So thanks for watching.